Okay. My presentation. So, uh, the focus of the presentation is emerging properties in self supervised vision transformers. They call DINO. Are you sharing the screen? Yeah. No. And it's Sorry. recorded. Yeah. yeah. No, so, it was published in ICCV 21. Uh, so, first, I'll to define what is uh, self supervised learning. So it is a machine learning process where the model uh, trains itself from from. Can you make it the input? From one part of the input, uh, they learn one part of the input from another part of the input. So they say that the unsupervised problem is transformed into supervised by after generated labels. And here uh, there are two examples of how self supervised learning is used. So. As you can see here, a uh, data set with no labels is used in self-supervised learning to get the pre-training model. And then this pre-training model is <coughs> used uh, via node, node transfer with data set that has labels to train the target model and accomplish the target task. So mainly self-supervised learning is uh, known for predictive or pretext learning for obtaining the pre-training models. Uh, coming to the paper, so they define Dino, which is uh, interpreted as a form of self distillation with no labels. And the main two conclusions that they make the first one is that uh, self supervised vision transformer features they contain uh, explicit information about semantic simulation of image, which does not emerge as clearly with supervised vision transformers nor with confidence. So, as you can see here in figure one, they provide a self attention maps from a vision transformer uh, with no supervision. And they say that uh, these maps will clearly show that uh, the model can automatically learn class specific features leading to unsupervised object imitation. So, if you take, for instance, this image, you can see there is two objects, which is toothbrush and the toy. And the self attention maps learn uh, the Object limitation of toothbrush in order the toy and the background. And second conclusion that they made is that those features that they obtain from a vision transformer uh, with no supervision, they were used for K9 classifier uh, with image data set, and they reached 78.3%, which was top one. So they say that those features are also excellent K9 classifiers. Uh, coming to the framework and the architecture here, uh, it is a PyTorch pseudocode of how, of how uh, this self-supervised self training is working. And here is just basic uh, framework. So uh, the process is learned through self-distillation. There is a student model and teacher model. Both of them have the same architecture. So student model is vision transformer and teacher model is also vision transformer. Uh, as input, uh, they pass different crops of one image. So they apply uh, different augmentation techniques and then they crop image. If they take less than 50% of the image, it's called local views. And if it is more than 50% of the image crop, it's called global views. And as input to the student model, they pass both local views and global views, while for uh, teacher model, as input, they pass on global views. And they call it local to global correspondence. So that they train the student model to interpolate context from a small crop from local views. <clears throat> um, as a result, so uh, each model, student and teacher model, they predict the k-dimensional embedding. And then uh, the softmax activation function is applied with cross entry loss. So that they want to make student distribution match the teacher's one. Uh, and as you can see here, so the k-dimensional embedding produced by student, by student model is directly applied to the softmax and then passed to the loss function. While here in teacher model, they also applied centering and there is an exponential moving average between the student and teacher models. So if you look here uh, in pseudocode, so they pass uh, two images to each of the models, they obtain outputs, then the loss function uh, is calculated and the teacher or no the student parameters are updated and teacher parameters are updated using the students one 
using exponential moving average. So basically, they uh, train student model <clears throat> to capture global representation from local views. And then based on updates of student model parameters, they update the teaching model parameters. Uh, what flow is centrally used? So uh, after saying that there are two main uh, types of collapse that they happen. The first one is that uh, in the model, only one feature is dominated. And second one is that no matter what the input is, the output would be the same. And in order to avoid this collapse, they applied the centering. So uh, as you can see here, uh, it's also up updated with uh, exponential moving average. And it's used here when it is deducted from the teacher model parameters so that they uh, prevent one feature from dominating. And um, they also do output sharpening. So in softmax activation function, they don't use direct, direct parameter of teacher, uh, teacher parameters minus uh, center parameters. They also divide it by TPT value, which is uh, value for the temperature in softmax normalization function. And they use it to be very low in order to prevent uh, all activations from being the same value. And they explain because small differences are exaggerated by dividing, uh, by being the TVT very small. So by applying centering and sharpening, they're able to avoid the collapse and then uh, the output obtained from uh, both softmax activation functions that used in uh, loss and the parameters obtained so that the both teacher and student model uh, learn semantic segmentation. Uh, regarding the experiments, so here, as you can see, they used only one uh, head in self-attention model, but here, these attention maps are obtained from multiple heads. So as you can see, uh, heads from last layer in Dino, they are able to uh, capture different locations and represent different objects or parts. So uh, if we take for instance, the uh, image of the force, it can be seen that uh, the red points, they capture on a specific part of the object. Uh, the same is done with the yellow and blue points. And here they represent the experiments table where they clearly show about the, how these features are used for uh, KNN classification with, with uh, ImageNet dataset. And as you can see, it outperforms mostly in all cases. Uh, they also did transfer learning uh, by finding the trained models on different data sets. So they report top one accuracy compared to supervised pre-training, uh, as you can see here. And here they provide the visual representation of how segmentations were done compared to supervised uh, methods. So if we see the images, it can be seen that Dino uh, is able to capture the object much more clearly and there is less noise. And if we take like this example, uh, where motorbike in supervised learning manner is not captured at all, and here it's captured fully. Um, yeah, so this is a main result of the that we're done by this paper. Thank you.